can't even keep up. So here is the final build and I've got to say I actually really enjoyed building into this. Um, they are considerably more challenging um, than building bigger quads. You've got much less space to work, your uh, wiring has to be much tighter, um, there's much less room uh, for things to miss each other so you know they, they are a more advanced build when you're talking about the 130s and smaller. Um, but if you enjoy the challenge, I think you'll enjoy uh, building this guy up. Um, so there are some things that I like about this design and there are some things I don't like about this design. Um, but in all, uh, it's it's come out pretty nicely. Let's talk about some of those things. So one of the things you do have to do, um, um, when it comes to the ESCs in particular here, I'll show you. Um, the standard ESCs um, that come with the kit, uh, as I said, I've replaced these for a set of XS20As, which I've uh, removed the signal caps on to make them D-shot. They are, the ones that are included are pretty much the same length, so even though these are wider, the length of the ESC is the same. And you'll see that the actual length of that ESC is such that there is absolutely no chance of getting the motor wires, you know, you'd have to cut them down to virtually nothing, even taking the heat shrink off the ends uh, of the motors, which is not really a great idea, just to be able to get them onto the three solder tabs on top of the ESCs. Um, the, the arms are just too small. Um, so what they uh, have clearly indicated you do by virtue of design is um, there are cutouts here so that you can fold the motor wires back and underneath and then there are also slots here, so you can run the motors wi motor wires up and then you bring them in uh, back the other way onto the solder tabs underneath. So um, it's not the same with all uh, ESCs, but most of them do have the solder tabs on, tabs on the bottom and the top. Um, so it's usually fine to do that. Um, obviously in terms of heat shrinking your ESCs, that then becomes a bit of a pain because you have to do it in kind of two sections because of where the wires come up. Um, but that's fine, so that's the way it had to be. What I will suggest is if you do decide to do something like this ever, make sure you take a file and really smooth off the uh, the sh any sharp edges on the carbon because these will start to wear with vibration and you'll start going eating through your motor wires. So make sure you really sand these down so they or file them down so they're nice and smooth. Same goes here. You're folding round cut, uh, cut carbon edges file the edges down. So um, it does feel quite smooth on the end here but obviously that does become you know a point of exposure. You could take some extra measures to protect this um, but I'm just going to run it as is for now. Um, but that's how that ended up. Um, what else have we got here? So in terms of the top pod, uh, actually before we get onto the top pod I will say this, um, what they originally suggest you do, um, although there is no real sort of way to do this, you've, you've got a few options in terms of building the main stack, um, but the actual um, PDB on the bottom does need to be lifted up ever so slightly to be able to run the battery strap through and under. Um, obviously you wouldn't want the PDB directly on the bottom unless you put some insulation under it, there's always a risk of a, a PDB shorting on the carbon, even though they've all, all got a very tiny bit of laminate on top. Um, so I chose to use uh, just a couple of uh, nuts in there just to space it up a little bit. Uh, then I built with the uh, metal um, metal tubes, threaded tubes, and then after that I went on top with the uh, standard plastic spacers and then the screws in the top of those. And the whole thing feels really solid and it all, uh, it all has uh, worked out quite nicely. There's a decent gap under here to get all my wire looming. Um, in terms of uh, receiver placement, um, I know that one place you could put the receiver is under here. I chose not to, I just find that a bit of a, too much of a noisy environment to shove a receiver. You could, I'm sure it'll work, it's just not something I'm comfortable with. Um, I actually ended up sticking my receiver up in the top of the top pod here. Um, regarding the top pod itself, I'll just put a picture in the top of the original top plate and how it looked. This top plate had uh, a section on, on the top here, a little arc with a hole in for the antenna. And originally I think the design idea was that the VTX went in here and then right angled up uh, with a right angle connector on a right angle VTX like the one that's installed coming up out the top. Now I'm not a fan of that design anyway, but I get a feeling they've actually changed the included VTX. Um, because if you look at the included VTX, you'll see you've got the display and the push button 
um, to change the power output between 25 milliwatt and 600 milliwatt and the channels um, you, you wouldn't be able to see or access any of that if it was under there and then coming up through uh, with the right angle coming up through a hole I don't like that design anyway it's like a really easy way to get the antenna broken off I've you know had it with older quads where that design you know you see that less and less now because it's just not a great great place to have the antenna coming straight up and out the top so I actually uh, just sliced that off in the end it was just a pain um, and then what I've done is I've chose to recess this um, back in, in the back here so that I can see the display I can get to the push button now this is still you know what can you do this is still going to be a potential weak spot in a crash however what I've done is put a nice spongy uh, foam pad behind it and one ripped high across the middle which gives it a nice kind of springy feel which will absorb a little bit of crash uh, impact uh, and hopefully make that resilient enough you can actually take the plate that I've mounted this to uh, which is quite nice that they've done this and you can see here it's actually behind this VTX originally I think the idea was that that would go in the front plate here or as far, as far back as possible as a method of protection and then you could either have the VTX come up and through that hole in the top plate if it had a straight out connector which would be much more preferable or use that section to mount the uh, the receiver um, I think it's just uh, a sign of how small your quadcopter is when even an XSR is kind of a bit too big to get inside really you need that new FS, FR Sky XM receiver the really tiny one I've got a few of those coming to have a look at I may very well just swap that out but you know this will do for now um, obviously the way I have it I, it's kind of limited my up tilt to about 30 degrees but that's on a 2.5 mil lens so um, that will be fine you've got a bit more in the vertical anyway I usually don't have a problem with any more than 30 degrees as is um, so as far as the rest of it goes um, you can see here I've pretty much pushed all the wiring rip tied it together and loomed it and it's just easy just about capable of moving it out the way to get a USB in for programming it I have fly, flashed beta flight 3.1.5 on there and um, we shall see how that goes I've had a little test hover and everything looks fine uh, the SPF3 that comes including the kit does have a uh, 8 megabyte flash data flash on it which is great so you can black box always a big thumbs up for me the other connectors of note in here are uh, there is a plug here for, for the VBAT um, which uh, goes down to the main uh, VCC rail of the PDB um, and then we're at the back here you can just see it out of the way in UR2 uh, which is up here I have the uh, transmit pin uh, sending out to the smart port in of the XSR so that I can get some telemetry data from the board including that VBAT information and then on this side uh, this connector which is IO2 on the SPF3 runs the SBUS signal power and ground um, so those are just worth a quick note there is also a connector here which is for adding a uh, 5 volt buzzer which I will do there isn't one in the kit but I will be adding a buzzer because something this small um, if it goes down in the field you might not find it again and certainly if the you know after a few minutes a lot of ESCs are, are programmed to start making noise through the motors these motors are so tiny they just won't make hardly any noise you won't hear it so buzzers definitely a recommended add-on for this quadcopter Another nice little design addition is the fact that the Runcam Swift that is included has the installed back plate with the uh, retaining section to be able to lock the camera into a certain angle so it's pivoting here and it's got another screw uh, point at the back there uh, that you can lock the angle of the camera and they've included that into the design which is also another great thing. I've added a little 25 uh, volt capacitor on here it's not the ideal one I wanted but it's uh, just enough to take a little bit soak a little bit of the back current from motor braking those voltage spikes that can go into the system that will always help and the other thing I've done is I've changed from instead of going for the included XT60 I've gone for the XT30 which is what came with this 75C uh, tattoo battery 4S and that is more than easily capable of handling the current on something that's uh, you know weighs as much as, as this does as light as this it's coming in at just under 300 grams so yeah it's a pretty light quad now if you're going to run this on 4s the, inclu the included props that they give with you are these dowel type uh, and these are uh, 3045 bull nose so very aggressive props um, now if you're going to run on 4s 
you are in danger of over propping these 4000 kV motors. Um, on 3S I think it would be fine as per the kit um, is kind of intended. If you want to go 4S, these, these motors are 4S capable, that's not a problem, but you do have to be careful not to over prop them. So what I would suggest doing is going for um, a much lighter pitched prop, something like a 30-30 tri-blade would be ideal. Um, in, I haven't got any of those but they're coming in the post so I will, as soon as I get those on I'll be putting up some uh, flight footage. Um, but um, these are quad blade 3030s um, which is you know that's still probably uh, generating a little more thrust than, than we should really be running um, but it will be better in the fact that it's less pitch and also that these are just over a gram in weight um, whereas these are more like three point something I think they're three point two grams um, so yeah be very careful not to over prop these motors if you're going to run 4S like I am. In terms of the base flight uh, PIDs I'll put a screenshot in at the end of where I ended up but as I always suggest go out and fly the defaults maybe the only adjustment to make before you do if you're running an X configuration is just to bring the proportional figures uh, and you, know, you can do the integral as well but certainly the proportional figures down to to looking more symmetrical um, because usually on an X configuration the pitch and the roll are considerably closer than they would be on something with more of an H layout or with a longer body um, like a lot of the other quads that are out there. So all in all uh, I'm you know I like I enjoyed the build I like the way it's turned out it feels a lot stronger than I thought it was going to and uh, you know there are a little uh, a few little design things that I, I don't like that you know we've worked around here but certainly if I was you know designing this there was there would be things I would be changing as I said my suspicions are that this wasn't the original included VTX nice VTX as it is um, it's not really suitable for this uh, one with a straight out connector would have been a better idea and have it mounted here um, and also the only other thing that I find annoying for, but maybe it's just me personally I don't run an RPSMA most of all my antennas are SMA so I have the one that came included with it and if this breaks I've got to go out and buy some more which is a bit of a pain really um, but yeah it's not a bad kit let's see well the real testament will be in how it flies is it a little rocket or is it you know just um, fairly middle of the road I guess we're going to find out so uh, let's go and see That is awesome! Just, I've spelt, felt some sprain, so just be mindful. It does scream, doesn't it? Does it feel like it's got the momentum when you're doing flips on yeah. FPV? Yeah. I've lost it. <laughs> it needs more lights on it. Yeah. Forward. Oh. <laughs> like, I'm it's a beautiful thing. That's great. Let's try again. <laughs> 